everyone! Thank you for coming and watching. I am so excited about this video. A lot of you have been asking me questions about the counseling career, and so I thought it would be a good idea to ask the same questions to counselors who graduated from my counseling program and have now been working in the field for a couple of years. I want to say a huge thank you to the amazing, wonderful, well-spoken counselors who were so willing to participate in this video and share their thoughts and insights, and I hope you enjoy! Hi everyone, my name is Judy and I am a school counselor at an elementary school in the Bay Area. I'm Yang Yang, I'm an associate counselor for a nonprofit in San Diego. Hi hey everyone, I'm Camille, I'm a therapist and outpatient mental health clinic in SoCal. Hi, my name is Betty and I am a higher ed case manager in Northern California. Hi, my name is Donna, I'm a head counselor for a specialty high school in the Central Valley. My graduate school experience prepared me well for a professional counseling career. If you agree, stay on. If you disagree, turn off your camera. I think a big part of it takes a lot of your own motivation and like will to learn. So I would say that I could have made more of an effort, but I think program wise, I feel like did a good job of preparing us for our field. I think I learned the most in our third year. I feel that the practicum that I chose really gave me a lot of experience. I think I was lucky in that sense that in my third year, I found a practicum site that really honed in on the fact that we were learning and we're new, but at the same time really gave us that independence to learn on our own, um, which I still carry on with me now and I'm two years out. My current counseling program is really based off of what I saw during my field work. I think that the graduate experience as a whole really prepared me well because I got to network and meet other counselors. And I'm just really grateful for the opportunities that I got to get involved on my campus to train me professionally and provide me with the experiences that I could talk about during my interview when I was applying as a school counselor. Yeah, and I think one thing that was special kind of similar to what you mentioned. I feel like the the professors were very open to connecting with you and help, even becoming a mentor. They were pretty invested in your professional development. So they were always um, down to sit down and have a chat with you and even talk about your future career. So that was one of the things that I really appreciated. I work as a head counselor for a dual enrollment program in the Central Valley, and so my job is mostly focused on academic counseling and college preparation. I don't oversee small groups. Very rarely do I have the opportunity to do individual counseling in the way that, you know, we were taught at our graduate program. I wish we would have learned more about just the California educational system if that's where we were going to spend our career on. I kind of I have a mixed bag. Um, I think there are parts that I really do feel like prepared me well, and there were some parts that I did feel like I was lacking. I had the unique opportunity of doing a dual track. So I started off with a school counseling program and finished that out and was able to be credentialed as a school counselor. And then I continued on with my third year for clinical mental health counseling, which made me eligible to become an LPCC. They talked a lot about how a school counseling program or even a school counselor would operate in the most ideal situations. And in some of my sites, they were less than ideal. I didn't, I don't think that the grad school program necessarily prepared me well for that. And I do really believe that they gave me a really great foundation, but ultimately I do feel like you learn a lot in the work ex experience and you learn a lot of it on the job and every job is different. So I think it was a great foundation to have. And I still feel like there was so much more to learn. And I agree with Ying. I think that they did a really good job with um, just the social emotional and the social justice bit and advocacy. Most of my knowledge that I used to in every day, I knew by myself previously or I learned on the job. And that was like one focus I wish we would have gone over is for those of us going into high school, how do you read a transcript? What are college admissions requirements? What is dual enrollment? What's the future of high school counseling? Because a lot of us went in wanting to go into the high school world. Um, and then some of us, of course, wanted to stay in middle school and elementary, but for those of us going into high school world, 
um, what we had was really just our internship experience. I have felt worried, scared, or judged to pursue a counseling career. If you agree, stay on. If you disagree, turn off your camera. Hey, it's us three again. <laughs> a lot of people don't understand the counseling career and they haven't heard of it, especially for me growing up in a very conservative, traditional Asian household. When I was in college as a senior and I told my parents that I wanted to pursue a career in school counseling, they both looked at me with confused faces and were like, what is that? And how much money do you make? And are you going to be able to take care of yourself? Personally, for me, the worried part was the fact that I didn't know what this career really entailed. You know, I just knew that I wanted to help people in whatever capacity this was. There was a lot of unknowns and a lot of doubts. I think I was lucky enough that I wasn't judged for it, given that in my culture as a Filipina first generation immigrant, we don't talk about mental health. And the fact that um, when I told my family, I told my relatives, it wasn't something they questioned me or judged me on. It was more just like, okay, we'll see how this goes. Similar to how I was with this field. I don't, didn't know much about it, but I was lucky that for the most part, this is something that I really enjoy. For me, it was more of personal worries and fears rather than um, lack of support or encouragement from family. Both my parents were in health or mental health related fields. So it really wasn't a surprise or something new that, that I um, kind of moved towards the mental health field. More so for me was that I, I kept questioning myself, is this what I really want to do? Kind of that imposter syndrome feeling, a feeling like everyone there is so much smarter than you or just not feeling like you're good enough or you know how to do things. And also thinking about, okay, how do I reconcile my own mental health issues? And then here's what I'm supposed to be working on with clients. So if I haven't resolved my own things, how can I be a genuine therapist to be able to help people work through their own issues? I decided on this career a little bit later in life. So I felt very sure that this was the right path for me. And once I found it, 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 did, it didn't matter. It really didn't matter what anyone else thought. Like I just knew that this was what I was gonna be doing. My dad still doesn't not know or understand what I do or where I work. He just knows that now he doesn't have to financially support me and I can financially support myself. And as long as I'm happy and um, I found something I really enjoy doing, he's supportive of that. Mental health is kind of on the up and up. Now, especially in the time of COVID, everyone's talking about mental health and self-care. There's still long strides to be made, but um, I do feel pretty positive and optimistic that, you know, working in this field, that it is kind of getting less and less stigmatized and people and the general public are more and more supportive of counselors and the counseling profession. I graduated my master's program at 24 and at that time I went straight into a leadership role within counseling. I was hired directly as a head counselor for my site and I I sit at a table with powerful women in my district. I serve the third largest district in the state of California. When I first started my job it definitely was odd to see tiny little me and I've literally have had district personnel come to my high school, go into my senior space, and then ask me where I plan to go and what I want to major in. And that it kind of throws them back when I say, hi, I'm the, I'm the counselor. But I think professionally, that's the only time I've ever had that moment where someone kind of looks at me a little, it takes a second look. It's just, it's just age in my, in my district. It's the age piece. I think it's really important that all of you talked about how like we had to advocate and be proud of who we are and be proud of the why and the reason why we became counselors. I feel very lucky that my parents and my district members and stakeholders have all treated me with respect and have treated me as a professional counselor in the field. I had to 
practice that positive self-talk to reinforce and remind myself that I am good and I am here for a reason and I got hired for a reason and this is the work that I'm proud to do. My degrees and certifications are a huge part of my identity. If you agree, stay on. If you disagree, turn off your camera. Okay, well, hi, friend. <laughs> I have a lot of respect for other first-gen students. I come from a um, community where a lot of women who look like me and who have my statistics don't make it into higher education. In my senior class, for example, in high school, only four of us out of 150 students went to a UC. When I serve students of color, students who are first gen, students who are dreamers, they put me on a pedestal because they see the symbol of someone who made it out, who made it into education and is in a career that's meaningful. And so I take that very seriously. I do treasure my education. I do treasure my degrees and, and they do mean a lot to me. They are a big part of my identity just because of what they symbolize. My dad never finished college. For him, it was very, very meaningful for my sister and I to graduate from, from college. I do think my, my degrees share a lot of not just my own hopes and dreams and what I've been able to achieve and what I've been able to accomplish, but also that of my family. I think also when you're a first gen, it changes the trajectory of your generations. Because now I know I can give my future generations a much better future than what my parents could have given me. I mean, especially in the wake of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her death, like, I mean, I'm a master. Like, I am a master yin yang. It wasn't that long ago that girls were denied higher education and the right to pursue other careers. So to me, these degrees are really important, not just for me or my family, but really how far other people have come and you know it gives other little girls and boys a big chance to dream other possibilities for themselves. I feel like I didn't have a clear idea of what exactly the job of a counselor would entail and once I did start it I kind of wasn't a hundred percent into it so that was a pretty scary experience because Similar to what all of you have said, there a lot of people have sacrificed and done a lot for me to get to where I was. And after so long of thinking, okay, this is what I want to do, this is where I want to go, to be, to kind of meet that roadblock of, wait, I, I don't know that this is what I want to do. I think I just wasn't sure how to answer this question. I think um, it's probably like semantics, like it's not the degree that I connect with. It's the work that we do. I just feel that it's a part of myself and it's very critical as well, but I don't feel that it's bigger chunk than my other identities. But I also feel that with the work that we do, I also don't say, you know, I have a master's or I graduated with this. It's, I'm a therapist and I work with kids and their families. I have felt emotionally drained from working as a counselor. If you agree, stay on. If you disagree, turn off your camera. And we're all here. <laughs> I think it's, it's really a time where we need to focus on self-care and just advocating for boundaries at work because it's so easy to just stay at work for forever because there's just so much that needs to be done. Now as a professional, I have moments where I meet with students that I don't see growth, especially at the elementary level. Sometimes you won't see growth immediately and you just have to be kind and patient with yourself and just remind yourself of that positive self-talk of, and you are empowering them and you are collaborating with them and working with them to grow and learn together. I really feel like if you have never felt emotionally drained at one point working as a counselor, then you're like not doing it right. <laughs> like I just, I, I don't, like, I mean, and that, again, that is so not to say that if you're feeling emotionally drained all the time that you're doing it right. Like, no, please, please advocate for self-care and, and learn work boundaries. There are some days where I go through my whole day and I realize, dang, not one person has asked me how I'm doing today. I've all day asked everybody else, how are you doing? How's your day going? How can I support you? And not one person has said that to me. 
I also have felt really emotionally drained with sometimes the politics that come with leadership or administration and not feeling supported and or not feeling like my work mattered to them or the sacrifices I made when I've put in extra effort. Or sometimes, yeah, you you get a case where it is just, it really hits home for you. And I think one thing that, you know, we haven't really mentioned just as a group is how versatile our job is and how many different things you could do with a school counseling degree, because I'm looking at this call of these empowered women of color and all of us have very different jobs and not one of us has a job that's similar to the other at all. And I think for me, the biggest piece when I would leave my first year of counseling was this is totally something new that I have never been prepared for. And it's like Ying said about being gracious to yourself. For a lot of people in this field, we're already like naturally empathic people. And so to be in this field where you're constantly, just like Ying was saying, constantly asking people how they're feeling, trying to be in tune with other people's feelings, it's heavy stuff, especially during this time of pandemic. Like it's a lot to deal with all the time and every day is so different and different tasks. Uh, pretty, yeah, what Don was saying, you have to be ver- versatile and flexible in this field, especially when there's just those days or those clients where you want to do more, but you can't. I really had to highlight self-care. I know we talk about that all the time. We, you, we learned it for, you know, during our program, but it really took a lot on me to really be intentional with that because of how much it was weighing on me. And then just on top of just, you know, just feeling all these feelings and dealing with all these um, cases and concerns, it's also just the fact that on top of that, there's notes and there's all these technical things that are really important if you're, you know, if we're mandated reporters, you know, there's all these things that you have to stay on top of while taking care of others, while also taking care of yourself. I work with a lot of high need students and we have limited resources. The kids that I work with are under a lot of stress and need a lot of help. And it feels like we're not, I'm not doing enough at times because some of the changes that they need are systemic and bigger than what I can do for them. So there are times where it kind of feels like this is not pointless, but like not making enough of a change for it to matter. I also just, you know, want to highlight, like, it's not always that way. (laughs) You know, I think we've talked very heavily about some of the downsides of our job. It's not an everyday emotional drain. Some seasons are harder than others. We are one person. Uh, We can't make people change. We can't make anyone do anything that they they don't want to do for themselves. Finding people who you can get support from, whether it be coworkers or grad school friends, all of those connections are super important because we all need support regardless of who you are, but counselors are always supporting other people. So I think we in particular need a little, little extra sometimes. I am paid fairly in my job. Keep your camera on if you agree. Turn your camera off if you disagree. I work in the Bay Area and I think generally pay is higher in the Bay Area than in other places. One of the fears that my parents and even myself had was, will I be able to support myself? And I think now that I've been working, I do think that I am paid fairly just by the fact that I am able to support myself, my family, and the people around me. I was applying to jobs. And to be honest, I was just searching for a job. And I remember I applied to almost every district in California. I just needed to go somewhere with the job. I'm blessed enough that I'm in a, in a position financially as well as just occupationally where I'm where I want to be. I agree with everything that Judy said. I think that if we didn't sit here and say that the numbers mattered, I think that would be a naive conversation to have. But if you're willing to give a little, you'll get a little. And, and not every district is going to not pay you what you deserve. There's going to be districts out there. You're just going to have to be flexible enough to go out there. And it might not be in the region where you've always dreamed of being. But you know why? If you can have all your needs met, what more do you want in life? I believe I had my job offer right as wrapping up my internship my last semester in our graduate program. And 
my current workplace actually offered me the salary that I was going to ask for. I'm very happy. There's a lot of opportunities and we're very encouraged to pursue professional development. And with my supervisor, I've seen her career trajectory and where I can go with my current position. So I'm happy with what I'm getting. <laughs> I work for a county funded mental health clinic. So it's fair. <laughs> I get paid fair enough, but definitely, of course, it would be nicer if it um, compensated us more, but I think fair is the right word. I think I have to take into context that with this clinic, we work with our population. It's low SES, uh, mainly Medi-Cal clients or non-insured clients, and it's through the county. You know, once I get licensed and also if I want to become a supervisor or um, something higher up, then that is a possibility. But of course, there were times when I was like, hmm, this is an interesting <laughs> salary. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm glad that you asked it because it can be very taboo. For me, this statement had nothing to do with necessarily my company. I was kind of really looking at, I think, the grander scale of how society is is really working. The fact that I have a master's degree and sometimes I look at babysitting jobs and I think, wow, those babysitters are getting paid more than me. Or um, why do I have a master's degree when I'm getting paid the same as, you know, people with bachelor's degree or I'm, I have a master's degree and I have training and qualifications and yet insurance still won't let us bill as associates and you know that's I think unfortunate because we do we do have training and we do we are supervised uh, by licensed professionals so when I look at other professions and the fact that they have master's degrees and their salaries versus ours or when I look at how a babysitter sometimes their hourly rate is higher than mine then no I, I don't think that it's fair I think my company pays fairly for, you know, the competitive pay of other mental health jobs or similar jobs. But when I look at the grand scheme of the job market, then then I don't think that it is fair because the work that we do is very important. And like I said, we've we've gone through a lot of extra training and a lot of extra schooling to get where we're at. I also recognize that I made the sacrifice. I could have been a school counselor and been getting paid more right now, but I chose a different route. And so part of that is, is by choice. But I also think if, if we've kind of done the work and we've gotten the extra schooling and we've gotten the extra training, we're going to these extra links to do these things, then I should be able to afford more than just hey, I can financially support myself now. When you phrases it that way, I agree with you. I feel like there's always this danger of you're going to be added all of these responsibilities. And now you have to do X, Y, Z. And if someone isn't picking up their slack, now you have to do it. And I think there's a little bit of danger once you go into the salary realm of counseling because when you're a salary and you have to do all of these other roles that they're giving you, you're not compensated for that. When I give up my Saturdays to take kids on college field trips, I'm not paid for that. Or when they start putting expectations of, well, in our district, since you're a counselor in this district, you're an administrator. And as administrators, now you have to do sports supervision on top of lunch supervision on top. And so these are all these things that you're saying after hours, so you may not have to fight over salary. Your salary might be great, but what is your salary in comparison to the duties that they're constantly assigning you to? Teachers are not paid fairly. People in education are not paid fairly. I mean, if you want to say, yes, we value education or we care about our future, then put the funds in education and in schools and in childcare because money talks. If you look at where funds are allocated, I think that speaks volumes to where values lie. And currently that's not in education. My job is a rewarding career. Stay on if you agree. Turn off your camera if you disagree. There are so many that share with me that I was the first person to listen to them. I was the first person to empathize or kind of be there and share their experience with them. So when things like that happen, it's impossible for it 
could not be rewarding. This job just has so many gifts. Even though sometimes when you discharge a client and you don't know how they're going to turn out, just the fact that you were able to validate what they're going through, help them with what you can, like sometimes you may not feel like it's enough, but at the end of the day, it's like, I know that we did as best we could. I just feel so grateful to be in this field because it really has shown me so much about how humans are meant to be connected. There is a real danger of, you know, asking yourself, is this even the right career for me? And sometimes I, I think realistically, sometimes you do look at yourself in the mirror and you do say, am I doing the right thing? Am I even effective? Sometimes I come home, I get my car and I'm leaving my school site and I tell myself, am I even effective? Sometimes I feel like my kids deserve someone who has it together and they're stuck with me. I, I don't know what to tell them. When my kids break records, it's phenomenal. Why? Because I serve low income students who are first gen. In my job, it's when you're that one person in a student's life who understands. And so that's my job. And for me, the rewarding piece is when I get kids out of their comfort zone and I say, well, why can't you? You are worthy. You are enough. I love my job. I like, I love my job. Now working with kids in juvenile hall that are, a lot of them come from broken homes. A lot of them have had multiple providers. And so they, they kind of don't care. You're just like another person to them. And when they ask to see you again, when they want to see you again, when they want to talk to you again, you're like, wow, okay, you know, know my name and, and you want to see me again, even though you've cycled through all these other people right. and you've built no connections with them and you're over therapy and you're over providers and yet you're willing to come and see me and, and to work with me. When you have moments of that, it, just, it really just makes it worth it. And it reminds me, this is why I do what I do. It's absolutely incredible to hear from all of you and just the ways that you are impacting and supporting and motivating, inspiring the lives of not only the people around you, but also yourself. So I want to say thank you so much for participating in this conversation. We should do it again. <laughs> Be fun. Bye. Bye. And that's a wrap. Thank you again for watching and thank you again to the amazing counselors for sharing their insights with us. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you think that this should become a series, please let me know down in the comments below. I hope you have an amazing, wonderful rest of your day or night, wherever you are, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!